Welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. In this instructional video, we review the ideal gas law and work in an illustrative example. I hope you find it informative. An ideal gas is one that obeys the relation of the type shown. That is a rather unsatisfying explanation. Let's dive in a little deeper. Kinetic theory predicts gas behavior that can be modeled with this type of relation when the molecules of the gas are infinitesimally small, hard, round spheres that occupy negligible volume. Also, no forces exist between the molecules except during collisions. Real gases can approximate this behavior when they are at a low density. The gas constant R in relation is the gas constant for a particular gas. It is derived from the universal gas constant as shown. In the example provided, the gas constant for nitrogen, N2, is equal to 296.8 joules per kilogram Kelvin. We will be using this constant later when we work through the illustrative example. There are other forms of the ideal gas equation. This one shown is simply recognizes that the specific volume is the inverse of the density. We will actually be using this form of the ideal gas equation for nitrogen in the example. Another form of the ideal gas equation uses the universal gas constant and the number of moles. Now let's work in an illustrative example. Our goal will be to determine the density of nitrogen stored in a compressed gas cylinder. We will treat the nitrogen as an ideal gas. The temperature of the nitrogen and surrounding is 25 degrees Celsius. A pressure gauge indicates 120 psi g inside the cylinder. A barometer in the room reads 750 millimeters of mercury. We will use this indication to calculate the atmospheric pressure in pascals. First, let's go ahead and convert 120 psi g to pascals gauge. Now let's use the barometer reading to calculate the atmospheric pressure in pascals. The details are shown here. Note that the calculated answer is an absolute pressure. Now that we've calculated the atmospheric pressure, let's convert the pressure of the nitrogen from gauge to absolute. Next we convert the temperature from degrees Celsius to absolute temperature, in this case Kelvin. Now we have everything we need. All we have to do is plug in the absolute pressure, absolute temperature, and the gas constant for nitrogen into the ideal gas equation and solve for the density. Although this sounds simple, we need to worry about units, so we do a separate check on the units. I hope you found this instructional snippet useful. If so, then please like and subscribe. Thanks, and have a great day.